In gardening, there are many commodities that we are needing. Skills, tools, but most importantly, water. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my favorite and most important water-wise gardening tips and skills to turn you into a better gardener. An important aspect of gardening and how we plant to prevent the amount of water that our plants use is what we call plant grouping. Now, there are various ways that we talk about this. Number one is that we plant plants together that have similar water requirements. So you wouldn't plant a plant such as an arum lily, which does require high amounts of water, next to a salvia, which is a great water-wise plant because it doesn't require that much water. Therefore, when to water one plant on its own next to a plant that has high water requirements simply is a waste of time, effort, energy, and water. So, there are two aspects to it. Number one is group the same plant together in large quantities. And when we talk about that and don't say, oh, but I've only got a small garden, that's fine. Three suffices for that. Three plants of the same type grouped together. And in gardening, we like to work in odd numbers. So threes, fives, sevens, nines, thirteens all work beautifully. And they give us that cluster that we're looking for. So not only does it have that impact that we want, but also we're putting the same plant together that has the same water requirements, which means that watering and maintenance becomes that much easier. We all know that certain lawns are water guzzlers. And in terms of that, I would strongly recommend that you rather go with an indigenous lawn that you're gonna choose for your garden. When we're looking at lawns as well, this is so important. I want you to get rid of unnecessary bits of lawn. So how do you identify that? Well, I'm gonna pose this to you and challenge you on this. Do you have areas where it's difficult to get your lawn mower to? If it's difficult to get your lawn mower to, get rid of it. It's a waste of time and energy and water. This section of the garden that I'm showing you right now was a narrow thoroughfare and I was always fighting to keep the lawn alive. So be brave enough and take it out. A great water wise tip is to always keep your mowing height slightly higher and that way you're reducing the amount of stress that the lawn is under plus you are then helping to even control the weeds. That way you're going to have to water your lawn less, saving a whole lot. One of the most practical ways of saving water is to simply catch the water and that's called water harvesting. Folks, there are so many amazing videos, educational and tutorials and how-tos on the Builder's YouTube channel on how to install rainwater tanks and how to harvest water. Behind this beautiful wall, which has now become a feature, is a water tank, which takes the water off the roof of this garage, stores it, and when we need it, a simple Jojo pump is put there and we then use it back into the garden. One might also consider installing an irrigation system. Irrigation systems do save you money and time in the long run, and there are huge advantages to it. In fact, there are great clips on the Builders YouTube channel of how to install and what to use. When talking about watering, the timing of watering in your garden is critical. Never water during the heat of the day because that is when plants are at their best and highest for transpiration. In other words, everything that's been taken up in the roots is being expelled out through the leaves. The plant simply just can't cope and it's wasting water. So therefore your watering window is before sunrise and preferably before nine o'clock in the morning and then late afternoons. That's the best time to water to conserve as much as possible. And one of the best ways of conserving water is a simple gardening activity that might cost you or might not. And that, my friends, is called mulching. Now, mulching is a term that is described as using an organic or inorganic material to cover the surface of bare soil. Now, you think about the soil is open to the elements, the sun bakes down and absorbs most of the moisture that there should be. So by placing a layer of organic or inorganic material on top of your soil, which is called mulching, will save you loads of water. Not only that, it's a great garden practice to also reduce the amount of weeds. It finishes off your garden and gives you that beautiful, even consistency. So let's take 
a whiz through some of the mulches that we prefer. We touched on gravel a little bit earlier. Now these can be used either in larger quantities over areas, or they can be used in smaller areas around pots. They work the same and they do exactly the same form of mulching. This over here is pine bark. Now for those of you that, that don't enjoy the messy look in terms of mulching, this is what I generally recommend folks to go for. Um, and this is pine bark, which is in large chips, and it does decompose after time, but when it does decompose, what it is doing is adding good organic content back into your soil. Macadamia nut shells or peanut shells also do a great job, very hard wearing and take a very long, long time to break down and end up into the soil. And of course then you would simply just replace it. Remember, never fear when we are placing down mulch that it gets gobbled up into the soil because in that way you're simply adding good humic content back into your soil. Finally, my favorites, and these are the ones that don't cost you a thing. Now, this over here is compost. A good layer, two to three centimeters around your bare patches of soil, around your plants that are establishing, or established plants always does the trick. However, this over here is our homemade compost. And in our homemade compost, you can see it's still breaking down here, but we've got the leaves, ah, and we've always got a few little surprises with some beautiful earthworms, which means that this is living and this is wonderful. This over here is leaf mold. And if you want to know what leaf mold is, guys, check out the YouTube channel because this is the easiest stuff to make and it is gold for your garden and great to use as a potting soil as well as a mulch. And finally, lawn clippings. As long as your lawn does not have weeds in it or if you mow your lawn before the weeds actually seed, then by all means, take the lawn clippings and use those as a mulch across your surface. They will not remove all the nitrogen from your soil. They will not infect and colonize your garden with strange things coming up at all. Those are simply old wives' tales. Then there's Hydrocash, which is a relatively new product, which is water retaining gel, which you can simply add to your soil, hanging baskets, pots and containers, and to difficult areas in the garden, which helps retain water. Well, folks, here we've given you several tips on how to save water. It really is a paradigm shift to the natural and way that we might have gardened in the past, but it is the right move. Try it one step at a time. Embrace one aspect of what we've spoken about and one small change can make a huge difference. Remember for more videos like this and how to's to check out the Builders website and blog and also their YouTube channel where there are loads of other ideas to turn you into better DIYer and a greater gardener. Remember you can shop gardening supplies either in store or online. Get to Builders and get it done.